Well, greetings viewers, voyeurs with Got That Funk, and this is a video response to a comment that I got from my friend Freethinker3161, um, who wanted to know what I thought, you know, caused the demise of the atheist community here on YouTube. And it's an interesting question. Uh, people will argue about whether or not there ever was really such a thing as the atheist community. Quite frankly, I can't understand why someone would entertain that argument seriously, considering what we all were doing back in 2009 and 2010, when I was a part of it anyway. Um, and the reason I say that is because, it just, just think about, for example, um, all the false flags and DMCAs and all the mirrored videos that there were. Uh, we were acting very much like, uh, like, you know, as a group, insofar as we were trying to support what we perceived as free speech and stuff like that. Uh, so there was that side of the community, and there was also um, an awful lot of tag videos that went around, um, and an awful lot of people were tagging the same people uh, around and around and around. Um, and that went on for, uh, you know, I think to the point of tedium for a lot of people. Now, before I talk about, I think, what happened to the atheist community on YouTube, I guess I'll talk a little bit about how it happened that I sort of wandered in, in the first place. Um, I started watching YouTube in the summer of 2008 uh, as a means to which I could watch speeches by Barack Obama, because they weren't uh, showing full speeches on the TV here. And uh, I wanted to see them, and you know, what's the internet for if you can't watch shit that you can't watch on TV? So... Uh, yeah, I started watching YouTube videos and created a channel in September of 2008 after having watched videos without a channel for a couple of months. Um, and I think it was in the sidebar to one of the Obama speeches, I saw a video by Pat Condell. And uh, I watched it just out of curiosity. I can't remember which title it was right this minute. Um, it might have been godless and free or something like that. I can't really remember for sure. But it was around about that era of Pat Condell videos. And um, I, I was entertained by the video and in the sidebar for that video there was a video by The Amazing Atheist and I thought, oh what the hell, and I clicked that and I watched that. And so um, then after that on my homepage, YouTube would occasionally uh, recommend videos from those two people and some other people uh, and I would just randomly click on those videos and then when I, um, a few months later about four months after I, I actually created my channel I discovered that all I needed to do to make videos was buy a webcam I, I didn't realize it was that easy I thought there was some great magic to it that I was uh, incapable of acquiring uh, so I went to uh, Argos and got myself a super cheap webcam and it really shows when you watch my old videos, they're very um, jerky. Uh, but anyway, that's how I wandered into the atheist community because I started watching atheist videos and um, at, was, I was watching videos both by Christina Rad and Dick Coughlin, which made me want to be part of the conversation that was happening at the time. And then I realized I could buy a camera and do so. Also, I was going through personal shit in my personal life, and YouTube was a nice little escape mechanism for me, uh, for all that stuff. So I got into the YouTube atheist community that way, and um, to my absolute surprise, uh, you know, people were very welcoming uh, uh, to me, uh, and um, I, I felt very generally well received by people, even though not a great number of people were subscribed to me at the time. Uh, but like on my first birthday uh, of being a YouTuber, which is about you know three months after I started getting subscribers, um, like a dozen people made birthday videos for me, which I couldn't get around, man. I just that just blew my mind, you know. And uh, it was always that way, um, you know. I always. I got lots of responses, video responses for the videos that I did um, on my channel. So I felt very much like there was a community. And even when I had my, uh, I, I, no, I didn't really get any sort of support when I got my first video flagged off, and that's the video where I mooned fake Sagan. But um, I did make a couple of videos which were quite unfairly flagged off um, in 2010. And sure enough, you know, everyone rallied to my support, and quite a few people mirrored my videos. So yeah, I felt like there was a community. 
okay and I felt like I was definitely a part of it I, um, you know the sad part about it was um, I think there is a, a tendency to look back with false nostalgia on uh, on the good times when there was an awful lot of drama as well and there always has been I mean my first YouTube atheist community drama was to the atheist um, uh, sorry, Amazing Atheist versus Coughlin thing, and I was sort of trying to go, hey, whoa, slow down, you know, this doesn't have to happen, and blah, 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 all that kind of shit. And that's one of the uh, means by which I gained my first set of subscribers, was people were subscribing to me because I was part of that conversation. So drama has always been a part of how the atheist community functioned, as far as I was aware. You know, and what I mean by drama isn't just confrontations between two, two, two YouTubers. I mean when there's a whole group of different sets of YouTubers which take sides and get involved and make videos and so on against each other and it gets vitriolic as hell in comments and so on. That's a drama to me. And uh, that certainly qualified as one of those dramas. Um, <clears throat> So anyway, there's an awful lot of stuff I'm leaving out, but suffice to say that, yeah, I definitely felt like there was such a thing as the atheist community at the time. And uh, speaking for myself, you know, I accidentally got out of that. You know, when I got together with my girlfriend in uh, summer of 2011, um, I still made videos at that time, but it was trailing off. And by December of 2011, I almost didn't make videos anymore. And for most of 2012, I barely even watched YouTube at all, much less made videos for it. Um... So I I accidentally fell out of the community, and when I came back to YouTube in 2013, uh, more sort of, you know, after my relationship ended, I felt sort of entitled to come back and do what I wanted to do, but better. And, um, you know, I've been trying to find my feet ever since then, really, and that's been almost two and a half years ago now. But the bottom line is, um, what happened? I think it was a couple of things. In 2010, uh, my friend the Thoughtful Atheist made a video um, called She Asked For It, which was ask, uh, talking about you know whether women are asking to be raped based on their behavior or their dress code or whatever. And uh, you know there was an awful lot of uh, vehement responses that took sides in that comment um, context. And um, I think it did start to polarize a lot of people. Um, who had previously been sort of, you know, willing to overlook differences of opinion. And then shortly after that, there was the whole um, Dawa Films versus Thunderfoot thing, and the Thunderfoot uh, video, South Park versus Islam, which sort of sparked that off. There was an awful lot of dramas that uh, revolved around Thunderfoot's channel at that time. You know, I certainly participated in some of those myself. I think in total I made like six or seven uh, response videos to Thunderfoot. Some of them were quite mocking, you know. Um, and I think th this taking of sides, whether we meant to do it or not, um, fractured the community as it was. And I think it's the fracturing of the community that makes people question whether there ever really was such a thing as community as if communities should be immune from being fractured because, you know, you can't really be a community if you're not 100% cohesive. I don't think it works that way. I don't think it works that way online or in life. I think people come and go out of our lives. Sometimes they stay for a long time. Sometimes they don't. And uh, it's just as easy in, in person to find out something about someone that you thought you knew that uh, changes the way you feel about them. And it just happens faster online. That's my opinion. And I think that's what happened to the atheist community. I think the uh, the rape thing started it off. I think the Thunderfoot dramas uh, really made it bad. I didn't really participate in Elevator Gate, but I think that's another one which just made the polarization and fracturing extremely obvious. You know, so yeah, um, that's my take on what happened to the atheist community. I think uh, when I I was off doing my thing when uh, the whole atheism plus thing happened, but I'm sure that was a another brick in the wall. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about that. Free thinker, for the, thank you for asking your question. I hope I didn't waffle on too much. And I look forward to what you guys have got to say down below in the comments section. If you've got a different opinion about what happened to the atheist community, please feel free to share it. Let's talk. Till next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.